Today on Brewing Around the Realm, we brew a red double IPA named The Red Woman. Stay tuned to find out how. Welcome back to Brewing Around the Realm. Today's ingredient list is four pounds of Breeze Pills and Light Dry Malt Extract, a pound of Mutton's Plain Amber Extract, a pound of Crystal 70 or 80. We actually couldn't get 70 or 80, so we have a mix of three quarters of a pound of Crystal 60 and a quarter pound of Crystal 90 and an ounce of Carafa 3, which is really dark, which is what's going to generate our red color. A, uh, a lot of hops in today's beer. You got a full ounce of German Magnum, a ounce and a half of Cascade, and a full ounce of Citra. We're using San Diego Super Yeast, that's White Labs WLP090. Uh, we're going to add some World, World Flock to today's brew to, for clarity, something we haven't done before. Yeast Nutrient, which we used last time. We're going to add gypsum to the mix, which is good for IPAs. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is get our grain ready to steep. We need to steep this for at least half an hour. We're probably going to go 45 minutes to an hour on this today. Uh, we have our grain bag, our muslin bag from the last batch we brewed, which was the High Garden Wit. You can always reuse your grain bags. Don't uh, don't throw them out. You made that mistake on the first batch, but we have learned our lesson. We have our new brew kettle set up. This is the first batch we're using the new kettle for. We have about three and a half gallons worth of water in here. We have a three gallon batch today. And we're just gonna take our grain and set it in here. And our water is about 150 degrees. Figure we're gonna get a good, decent red color with this. And once you get it in there, sit it in there and let it sit there, put the lid on, let it sit there for at least half an hour, we're probably going to let it go a little bit longer. Our grain has been in the water for about half an hour, and actually that was enough time. I thought we were going to need more time. And so we're going to raise the water temperature up, and when we hit 170, we'll take the bag out. Our wort is just about in the boil, so I'm going to add in our dry malt extract, but I'm going to turn it into a slurry first. I'm going to put it in this pot. Here, I'm going to put about half of this three pound container in here, and I'm going to add some of the wort to this to create a slurry, which I can then put back into the pot. I'll make sure this is all liquefied and we don't end up with any lumps in our. It clumped up instantly when I. Uh, put it in here and I definitely want to make sure I get this all smoothed out mixed in before I add that to the pot. My suspicions were confirmed here after heating this up and mixing this for say about 20 minutes I was able to get all of the DME that had coagulated in here dissolved and I think we're going to bring it our work up to a boil right now and then I'm going to dump this in there. I'll give everybody a quick look at what this looks like while I, after I dump that in here. And uh, it's a little foamy, but I think underneath you can definitely see that we've got the right color. All right, we just started the boil, so I'm gonna throw our ounce of magnum in to get started. Put that in there, and I'm gonna set our timer, and we're gonna off to go. Yep, you're good. Just about two minutes into the boil here, and our hot break has subsided great, a great deal. So I think we're good to go. Just about down to 15 minutes, we're going to throw in half an ounce of citra, 
and half an ounce of Cascade and a teaspoon of gypsum and a whirl flock tablet. All right, 15 minutes left, here we go. Five minutes left, we're gonna throw in another half an ounce of Cascade. All right, that's it. Our 60 minute boil time is up. Time to turn off your burner. Put your lid on. At this point we're going to add our final addition of a half an ounce of Cascade and a full ounce of Citra. While our ward is cooling, now is a good time to sanitize everything. I put five gallons of water and a tablespoon of star sand in our bottling bucket. We're going to use that to sanitize everything. We're going to run about a gallon of sanitizer into our carboyer to make sure it's sanitized as well. Put my hand on the top to make sure we get our sanitizer all around. Set our carboy on the counter here and let it drain out. Okay, I almost forgot to put our yeast nutrient in here. And since we're dealing with a three gallon batch, we're going to use a tablespoon of yeast nutrient. Okay, short version is the auto siphon didn't want to siphon, and I had to pick the kettle up and dump it in here. And filter everything out, so we're just waiting for that to finish filtering, and then we'll move on to get it into the carboy. All right, we've got an original gravity reading of 0 0.074, so I think we're good. It's a little less than I wanted, but I don't see a problem with that. All right, time to fill up our carboy and get moving. Well, after a nearly catastrophic failure of losing our stopper inside the carboy, I've retrieved it, filtered the beer three more times just to make sure there was nothing in there. And we are finally ready. I'm going to pitch the yeast in and we're going to go for it. All right, here we go. We yeast in, airlock in, crush fingers. Let's see what we have in two weeks. Our Red Woman Dell IPA is ready for bottling, so let's get started. All right, let's get everything sanitized. We got our sanitizer in the bucket here, and we'll fill it up with some about five gallons of warm water. All right, get everything you're going to be using in the bucket. Looking at your drawer mask and your siphon, and we've got a brand new hydrometer since we broke the last one. We've got a brand new case of 12 ounce bottles, so let's go those in the bucket as well. Okay, we got all of our bottles sanitized. I sanitized 36 bottles. I think that should be enough. We got everything into the bottling bucket and we ended up with just under two and a half gallons, which is almost exactly the same amount we had last time. Now, let's get this into bottles. I almost forgot to get our hydrometer reading. We are at uh, 1.015, which leaves us at 7.74% alcohol, which is really close to what our target was, so we did pretty good on that. Time to get our priming sugar ready. We're going to boil half a cup of water with a quarter cup of sugar, and we'll be good to go. All right, here we go. Open this up. First 
does take a little while to get these filled, but Lloyd's are patient. And you wait till it comes all the way up to the top. And when you take it out, you'll be left with just the right amount of headroom on there. Don't forget to sanitize your caps as well. I ended up with 23 bottles out of that. I thought I was going to get slightly more, but 23 is actually not too bad for considering how much we started with. Time to get all of our caps on. <clears throat> Make sure your capper is sanitized and get your caps on. And don't be afraid to put more pressure than you think you need to. Sometimes they are quite resistant to sealing properly. You want to make sure you get the good seal on that. Three bottles ready to go into the aging closet and we'll put them in there and we'll see this probably in about a week. It's been 10 days since we bottled the Red Woman Double IPA and I've had a couple of these over the last week just to test them out and I've got something really strange going on. I got one of these is cold and one of these is warm and I'm going to show everybody what's going on here. This is the cold one. You can see what I'm pouring that in there is minimal carbonation. This one's actually the most carbonated out of any of the cold ones I've poured. And it's just really, really strange. Now, the warm one. And you'll notice that the warm one has a better head on it and it seems to be better carbonated. So I think I know what's going on is that when they're cold, the, they're just not releasing the carbonation. And it's really, really strange. They do taste different, warm versus cold, and that's to be expected. But this is really strange. So if anybody out there has an explanation or a better idea, please let me know in the comments below and then we'll take a look at it. Um, I mean, you can definitely smell the hops. It's not as hop forward as I would have thought with all the hops you put in there. But it's really good. I really like it. It's definitely a hop bomb. It's really hop heavy. And this one, you don't get anything out of. This is the cold one. Um, you don't get as hop heavy of a, of a taste to it and it's because it's cold uh, you get a little bit more of the malt forward flavor instead of the hops but overall I think this is a success I think what I'll do next time is put a little bit more priming sugar in when I go to bottle it and try to compensate for the uh, low level of carbonation I got in these ones but anyways I'll have the recipe in the or a link to the recipe in the comments below or in the description below I mean and if anybody is interested in brewing this I'd be like like to know what you think or what you've come up with and please leave a comment or a suggestion in the comments below and let us know what you'd like us to brew next we're going to, we've got a couple of videos already in the can and we're just waiting for the beer to ferment and be, get ready for us to show them but we're definitely interested in talking to everybody and letting everybody uh, know what we're doing. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It really helps us out. That's it for this time. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.